Hey guys, in this video we're going to be talking about how to represent the quotient or the answer to your division problem as a decimal. So we have on here uh, a problem from your practice page and you need to follow along on your practice page to show the work as I do it or in your math notebook so that you completely understand what's going on. So we're going to just divide this and then when we get to the remainder we're going to stop because we're going to change that remainder into a decimal. So let's go ahead and set this up. First things first, we have the dividend which lives inside the den and the divisor which lives outside. And because we don't want to forget our Des McDonald's served cheeseburgers, we're good to go. First things first, we are going to do uh, 4 divided by 2, and that cannot be done, so we have a 0. 4 is bigger than 2, so we're going to go to 27. 4 can go into 27. It can go in 6 times, and 6 times 4, so we divide it. 6 times 4 is 24. If we multiply, we're going to subtract. We're going to check. Is our subtraction answer of 3 smaller than our divisor? It is, so we're good to go on. So check. Now we're going to bring down our 9. Bring it straight down. And we're going to do our division now. We're going to ask ourselves, can 4 go into 39? And if so, how many times? And 4 can go into 39 9 times. So 9 times 4 is 36. We're going to subtract. We're going to check. Is our subtraction answer smaller than our divisor? And it is, so we're good to go. We can, oh, we don't have anything else to bring down. So let's stop here for a second. So far, we have the answer 69 with a remainder of 3. Now we're going to turn this into a decimal. So this is where we have to put in some extra steps. So turn into a decimal. Sorry for my bad handwriting. Okay, so this is how we do this. It's not that difficult. It just takes a little bit of practice. I'm going to switch pen colors so that you can see this. When you have to turn something into a decimal for a remainder, a couple of things. First things first, you're going to add a decimal, making sure that there's no other numbers to the right of our last number that you brought down, okay? So that was our, the 9 was the last number we worked with. There's nothing else to bring down, so I put the decimal point right after it. Second thing, this is where you need to keep everything lined up. We're going to bring a copy of that decimal point, like a copy and paste, straight up, okay? Now, we need to make our bar a little longer here, which is just fine. Next thing we need to do is we're going to add a zero after the decimal point. Okay? And now that we have those things, we're going to jump right back down to our B, which is bring down. Okay? Do you remember how we left off on the check? We had checked to see if 3 was less than 4, which it is. Okay, so we checked that off, and we were going to bring something down, but we didn't have anything. But now we do. So we're going to bring our zero straight down. So you see how everything matters to keep everything lined up here. Now, let's start over. We're going to ask ourselves, how many times does 4 go into 30? And 4 goes into 30 evenly 7 times. So our 7 is going to go right above the zero. And we're going to multiply. 7 times 4 is 28. We're going to subtract. So we have a 2 left over. Let's check. 2 is smaller than 4. So we still have a remainder. If you still have a remainder, you need to add another 0 next to the 0 you previously put. So we're just going to keep adding zeros until the cows come home or until we finally have no remainder left. So we added our zero. We don't need to do anything else now except bring that zero back down. Okay. So we brought it down. Oops, I forgot my check from before. And now let's go back to the top and divide. 
So 4 goes into 20 5 times. We write our 5 right there above the 0. 5 times 4 is 20. And when we subtract, we don't have anything left over. Checking our 0 is less than 4. And now, since we don't have um, any remainders, we are done. So our answer in, our answer in decimal form here is 69 and 75 hundredths. Here was our answer as a remainder, and this is our answer as a decimal. You can stop here if you feel like you have the hang of it, or you can go on to the next problem, which is another practice problem from your practice packet, from your practice pages. Here's our next problem, 951 divided by 6. A reminder that you need to be working along in your math notebook or your practice pages showing your work from this video. So let's set this up. We have 951. We're going to divide that by 6. We're going to write down DMSCB to help us keep track. And here we go. First things first, we're going to ask ourselves, can 6 go into 9? 6 is less than or smaller than 9, so 6 indeed can go into 9. It goes in one time, so we divide it. We're going to multiply, so 1 times 6 is 6. We're going to subtract, so we have 3. Let's check. 3 is less than 6, so we're good to go. Let's bring down, and we're going to bring down our 5 straight down, keep everything nice and lined up. Let's start the process over. How many times does 6 go into 35 evenly? It goes in 5 times, so the 5 is written up top. We're going to multiply. The 5 times 6 is 30. Now subtract and check. Is our subtraction answer smaller than our divisor? It is. 5 is less than 6, so we're good to go. Let's bring down our 1. Keep everything nice and straight and lined up. Graph paper is a huge help here to keep things lined up. Okay, 6 can go into 51, and it can go in, I think, 8 times evenly. So we divide it. We're going to multiply. 8 times 6 is 48. We're going to subtract. We have 3 left over. And let's check. 3 is less than 6, so we're good to go. And we're at B. And since now we're trying to put this in a decimal, we can see that we have a remainder and we need to get rid of it if we need a decimal for an answer. So let's grab our pen. And you remember from the last one that the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put a decimal point in. And then it's going to go for copy-paste. We're going to copy it and paste it straight up from where we wrote it down below. If you need to make that top bar longer, that is just fine. Now we're going to add a zero. Just one. We can always add more later if we need them. And then we're going to bring that zero straight down. That looks a little lopsided. I'm sorry about that. It should be straight down. Let's do this again. Now, dividing. 6 goes into 30 how many times? It goes in 5 times. So we're at the 5 up top. Multiply. 5 times 6 is 30. Subtract. This time, we do not have any remainder. So we are done, and we've checked 0 is less than 6, so we are good. So our answer to this problem in decimal form is 158 and 5 tenths.